Boom. <laughs> what up? I'm starting this video out in the middle of the night. I'm out here in the shop by myself. And, well, jamming. Easy, easy now. That's enough, okay. So, out here in the shop, jamming out. And this is what we're doing. Oh yeah. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that I've been getting ready for this coming season. All the preseason prep going on right now over here at Bobby Guy Films, let me tell you what. And a ton of you have been requesting some preseason videos. And that's what today is. So as you can tell, I'm getting all my silhouettes, all my Canada silhouettes ready. We're putting them together. So check it out. That is a pile of five dozen decoys. And look at this, five dozen decoys doesn't even come up halfway up my shin. So that's five dozen, that's five dozen. And this box right here is another five dozen. Well, and here's another case. But so you get one, two, three, four, five, a dozen in each case. Oh yeah. So check it out guys, I'm putting together these silhouettes and a lot of you guys know what these are. These basically replace full body decoys. Look how small they are. That's why five dozen is only literally half as tall as my shin. So this is how they come. You pull the plastic off and then it comes with spring steel stake system. And what, it, what happens here is they show you two little holes. If you can see those little indentions, it's hard to see on the camera. That one right there. They show you where to put them, and you just slide them in, boom. So that is your stake system. This goes in the ground, and you can adjust the height of the decoy. Boom, boom, ba boom, boom. So that's what I've been doing to put these bad boys together. They have so many shapes of these things. Check them out. Just amazing decoys, man. I'm telling you what, I'm going to be able to haul all my decoys this year when I'm doing small hunts literally in the bed of my truck but i wanted to tell you guys here in the first part of the video if you guys are interested in any of these solo decoys and any of dive bomb socks crane decoys they have a bunch of stuff over there use code bob guy just like this right here at checkout at divebombindustries.com to save 10 percent on your entire order it doesn't matter what you order it's 10 percent off your entire order use it as many times as you want give it to your brother your son your daddy, your grandmother, I don't care, your best friend. Share it, what I'm saying. Go save you some money before the season's here. As well, big announcement. Here at Ducks Waterfowl, you know what we be doing. Accepting new pro staff positions. A ton of you have been DMing me, messaging me, commenting here on the YouTube channel, wondering when we're gonna allow new pro staff opportunities on board. Well, we're accepting them now. I know we're accepting them through September pretty heavily, but then we're going to probably start trickling off. So if you guys want to be on board, you need to email ducksprostaff at gmail.com. I mean ASAP if you want to be on board. We're going to email you back, send you a list of questions. But yeah, it's about easy as that. Not very difficult. So go do it. Ah, yeah. Ah, well, yep, as you can tell, it is the next day. But last night, I've been getting the, all these decoys ready. This is how far I got last night. But look at the mess we got going on here, fellas. We got about seven dozen, so that's a five dozen box and another two in there. So we got about seven dozen left to do. But I've just been coming out here, working on building the old dive bombs in my spare time when the kids go to bed and whatnot. If you guys are buying new ge decoys, you gotta build them, and that takes a little bit of time. But my preseason prep, for one thing, it just it really consists of finding everything that I just threw in the shop last season when I was over it. You know how it goes. When you get to the end of the season, you've been working your butt off all season, you're kind of just over it and you're ready for a break. Well, me too. And when it's in the season and I unload the trailer and put all my stuff in the shop, stuff just gets thrown. Between me literally misplacing stuff and then the kids, you know, getting, getting a hold of daddy's calls, running around the house blowing them, I gotta find all that stuff. I just found like three GoPro batteries that I've been looking for. But as you can see here, I'm just getting everything accumulated. Everything from back in the shop that was just stuffed anywhere and everywhere, I'm getting it accumulated up here. So we got the layout blind, the mojo ready to go. Don't know why the net's there. But we do have our T-posts for our tree row blinds and our camel to go with it. So again, just trying to find everything that I stuffed away and uh, just get it ready to go. See, got the old decoys ready to go. I know where they're at at all times, that's okay. Other than all, everything in here in the garage, we have the trailer. And the trailer, 
I actually just organized probably, what, two months ago. I organized it, pulled all the duck stuff out of it, left all the snow goo stuff in there, all the dark goo stuff, stuff that we weren't going to need to use for a while, and we went and stored it away. But I was going to ask you guys, would it be more interesting for me just to haul my silhouette decoys and stuff, you know, when I'm doing solo hunts and small hunts, in the bed of my truck. I, I thought about buying another new small trailer just for myself, a small, like, 12-footer. But realistically, do I need one? I don't think so. If you guys think I need a trailer, drop a comment down below and we'll see what happens. I did find one that I really wanted, but do I need to spend the money? I don't know. But just finding all your extra mojos and your extra poles, getting stuff organized, just at least getting it in a pile so you know where it's all at. You know, honestly, one of the biggest thing, decoys, gear like this, easy to keep track of, it's big. One thing that I struggle with the most as I do not pre-plan pre-organize my actual hunting gear I'm talking about my long johns my thermals everything like that just getting that stuff ready because a lot of times even in September October there will be mornings where it gets down into the 50s and and you, you need them some mornings might be even a little chillier especially in October but uh, that's one thing that I always try to get ready I get my hot hand spot just the other day I was at Walmart and I bought a whole case of hot hands because I know I'm gonna need them. I'd rather just buy stuff now so when the season gets here, I'm not struggling to just get everything bought that I need. Oh yeah, you know we're gonna need this bad boy. Oh yeah, the old jerk rig. Oh yeah. Yeah, finding my lanyards, you know, I'm always switching up lanyards. Here at Ducks, we always have some different lanyards available, and let me tell you, these bad boys are sweet. Get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get my calls on that bad boy and get it ready. So, you guys have just been asking about me doing a preseason video, and I think that this is just what it is. It's a preseason video. It's all of our trinkets because as duck hunters, we literally have to have a million things on us at all times. That's why we all have man satchels called blind bags because we have to put all of our goodies in them. Look what I just found. That's what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. We have, yep, so there's my shotgun shell holder that I use for marsh hunting. You know, water, when I'm trekking through water, I like to put uh, my shotgun shells in this bad boy. So we'll put it down there so we know where it's at. And then, look, right behind it, we have a glove that I've been looking for. Brand new glove. It's muddy from North Dakota, but been looking for that glove. It's a good glove. But part of the preseason too is kind of getting everything in a pile and seeing what you need to purchase because as duck hunters yet again we're always buying something that either breaks or that we lose. One thing a lot of you guys the mojos. A lot of them just stop working. Uh, uh, if you guys have had this issue drop a comment down below but I think I've personally went through like seven or eight mojos. So now is a good time to put those mojos on the charger to make sure the battery takes a charge. And if it doesn't, you need to see now if them batteries are bad. So that, let's go check that. So here she is. And she's been running good. This mojo is actually probably mm, five years old, I bet. Right at five years old. And I actually just used it pigeon hunting. So I know it's good to go. It's just a good little hint. A good little tip to you guys is to check your mojos. If you haven't touched them since last season, you need to get out there, you need to put them on the charger now to make sure them batteries take a charge. Because I'm telling you what, if you don't try them now and you just go slap them on the charger the night before and you head out to the marsh and you get all the way out there and you get your spread set and you go to turn that mojo on, click, and it don't work, yep, that's where I'm saying, make sure you check your mojos big 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 tip that is a giant tip i don't know how many times i've went out on opening day and literally we take two to three mojos and not a darn one of them work oh yeah 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 and by the way a ton of you have been wanting me to do what's in my blind bag and guess what i'm getting that video ready oh yeah so be looking out for it but we are bringing back a ton of new items to duck september first so be looking out we're gonna have all of our calls all of our lanyards there's gonna be a bunch of new product dropping september 1st as well as the pro staff as i mentioned earlier so if you guys want to get on board on the pro staff get you a discount code to save you some money help support ducks in the next generation of waterfowl shoot them an email tell them you're interested and what happens is we send you a questionnaire back that you fill out and then we declare yeah hey man you're on board or whatever so if you're interested email them big big preseason tip now with me this is going to be a little different due to the fact that i've been shooting my gun all summer 
I've either been shooting clay rock or pigeons. A ton of you have been loving the pigeon hunting, by the way. So I appreciate you guys always letting me know you like the pigeon hunt. A lot of people overseas. I don't know if you guys seen that last video of the banded pigeon two or three videos ago. But it went overseas. And boy howdy, we were literally... We made them mad. They, they're really mad. But what I was going to say is, if you guys haven't touched your gun since last season, it's just like the Mojos, you need to get it out right now. You need to get the sucker torn apart. You need to get it cleaned. These are things that, all these little things, it just helps that opening day hunt that much better. You got to make sure all your ducks are in a row to make sure that opening day hunt isn't a bust. Because believe me, I've had so, so, so many opening day duck hunts to where I didn't check something. Mojo was one. Gun was another. Do I have my calls in my blind bag? All those little things. Where's my remote to my mojo? Oh, where'd that go? I don't know where that is. So all these little intricate little things, stuff that you guys need to be making sure you guys got. Now real quick, I know what a lot of the comments are going to be down below on this video. So I want to cover them real quick. This is not completely off topic, but it relates directly to preseason because we all know the, the beginning of the season is always going to be teal. One question that is commonly asked is, Bobby, are mojos worth it? Do I need a mojo for teal? And I would say yes. Uh, I do believe in mojos, and I think they serve their purpose. They get the bird's attention, and they're given the bird a certain area to land in. And even if you don't get the birds to land, they're going to skim over that mojo and check out the motion. Because the motion is what draws them to the spread. A lot of times when you're public hunting and you're contending with other people, maybe they have mojos, maybe they don't. But I think the beat of the wing, the mojo, really serves its purpose. For teal hunting especially, the small birds are interested just to check out the motion. Yes, I am all for mojos or lucky duck, spinners, whichever you guys have, it doesn't matter. I think they're a good idea. So question number two is one I really, really, really like because it shows me uh, all my beginners on the channel and I have said a ton. Don't be ashamed if you're a beginner duck hunter and you're here on the channel. This is why the channel is here for all you guys. So one of the main questions again is, Bobby, for teal hunting, duck hunting, how many decoys do I need? And I've done a video on that before, but we're just going to throw it in real quick because I know that it relates directly to a lot of you guys watching this video right now. Honestly, guys, two dozen. Two dozen floaters is all you need. Maybe half a dozen till, that's all. So half a dozen till, a dozen and a half regular big duck, but for till, you can get away. If it's till season, guys, you can get away with a dozen decoys. Literally, it all depends how much competing you're going to be doing on those public marshes that's what really can really kick you right in the you know what is when you're really competing with a bunch of other hunters not saying that their spread is better than yours but when there's that many spreads the birds are like where do i go you know what do i do they get confused because they're just like i'm getting honked at quacked at yelled at i see a bunch of spinning stuff and you know you know what i'm saying so uh, one big tip, tip number three, tip number three, is if you can get away from people, get away from people. Now, I know a lot of people go and scout the same public marshes that a lot of you are going to be hunting. I know, been there, and I do it. Not done it, but I do it too. And my tip is get out there during the weekday when no one else is scouting it in the mornings. Get out there in the mornings and see what they're doing. Now, I know a lot of you have school and you have work, so it's hard to scout during the, the morning, but that's where you're really going to see what your ducks are doing. In the evening, you can still scout. Great. And you can see what pools they're really liking, but just know that everybody else is going to be scouting in the evenings as well. So they're going to be trying to do the same thing that you do because they're, they're seeing the same thing the ducks are doing. So can you sit uh, 100, 200, 300 yards from somebody? Sure, but how much fun is that? I mean, I'll do it again this year. Believe me, I'm going to be in the war zone again, and I'm going to post a video, and you guys will see it. So, um, But all I can say is just try to get away from people as much as you can. Don't Just because you've seen the ducks going to this pool, and there's already literally one to two to three people already set up on it, just leave it alone. Go, go, go somewhere else. Just go somewhere else because you're going to have better luck going somewhere else. A lot of hunters will ball up where they know the ducks like the most. What I don't like about that is just there's too much decoys. There's too much 
unreal stuff happening there. When they have all those decoys and all the quacking going on to look at, they're learning. They're like, oh wow, this does not look natural at all. So you being off by yourself, away from all that noise, away from all that craziness, might look a little more natural. So it's always all about being natural. I don't care what situation we're in, whether it's teal, snow goose, goose, duck, I don't care what it is, natural. Yeah, I, I just rambled there for a while. But I think what I'm saying is a lot of us, um, we're really looking forward to those opening days of, of teal and and some of you drive quite a ways to get to that marsh. And what, what I'm getting at is if you have to sit 50 yards from somebody, don't do that. Ask them to join their group. Be like, hey, you mind if we hunt with you guys? We really don't want to sit up beside you. Uh, we drove, you know, you can explain your situation. We drove 30 minutes to get here, 45, whatever it is. But a lot of duck hunters, they'd rather you sit with them then set up 50 or 100 yards downwind because we all know what that does. Just creates a mess. So do not be scared to ask another fellow duck hunting group out there, uh, hey guys, there's nowhere to sit, it's crowded, it's literally 30 minutes before sunrise, do you guys mind if me and my buddy sit with you? And if you're nice and courteous, they probably won't care at all. I know I would rather have one of y'all hunt with me rather than sit up 100 yards away from me and worse 30 to 50 yards away from me bad deal but i really want you to drop me a big old thumbs up if you like these preseason videos i know there wasn't a ton of action and whatnot in here that's why after the video ends here i'm gonna roll some duck footage for y'all just to slide in some of that saucy footage for y'all to enjoy before the season's here because it's getting close getting close fellas subscribe if you haven't i enjoy all you guys being here like always thank you for watching Thank you for subscribing, and we will see you on the next one. Enjoy this saucy little duck footage. Oh my goodness. This ain't fair. Oh my goodness. Boom. Look at all the ducks.